A program that does exactly the same thing every time isn't uh, necessarily uh, useful or interesting. So sometimes we want to get a program to react to either something that's going on or the user input. So if you imagine a game wouldn't be very interesting if it just did exactly the same thing every time regardless of what buttons you were pressing on the controller. So what we're going to have a look at here is we're going to um, take a number, just a very simple program. The program so far um, creates uh, an integer variable, it asks the user for a number and then it uh, stores that in the value i. So at the moment if we just run that um, what it will do is, well pretty much nothing really apart from asking you for a number. So ask, give me a number and then it stops. So what we can do is we can check the value of that number. We can say um, if, so a computer makes a decision, you might have done this in Excel or other programming languages, things like Scratch for example, they all tend to use the same structure. So we say if, and then we have a particular condition, and then we say, um, so for example in this case, if i was less than zero, so that means it's negative, then, then what do we want to do? So um, what I want to do is I'm going to say that's negative. So it's not a very um, sophisticated program, but it, it's a good example of sometimes we want to do something and other times we don't. So we're going to say um, that's negative. So if the user enters a negative value, which is less than zero, we're going to say that's negative. And the structure is if the value is negative, then... And the bit that's indented, the bit on the next line, is what we want to do under those circumstances. And then end if um, ends that bit that's... Sometimes you might see this uh, called conditional. That ends the conditional part. So this line here is only done on the condition that i is less than zero. And then just so we can see that it's finished, I'm going to um, just say the end at the end. Okay, so I'm going to run my program again, and if I uh, put in a negative number, it says that's negative. And then it carries on and runs the end of the program. So if I run that again and put in a positive number, or indeed a zero, what do you think it's going to do? Well, let's try it. So I'm going to say 4, and it says it's the end, so it has carried on, but it hasn't done... Uh, anything. So I'm going to get rid of that end now because that's shown us that the program does continue after the conditional section. So what about if there's an alternative? So if we have a condition such as is i less than zero, so is i negative, well that's either true or it's false. So in this case we only want to say something, or to start with we only wanted to say something if it was negative, but I might want to extend this and uh, do something if it's positive. So we can also add an extra part um, called else and then we can, um, so if it's not negative, or well we could say okay, well uh, let's say that it's positive. So let's run that now. So give me a number, I'm going to say, so minus 3 carries on as it did before. This tells me that's negative. If I run that again, give it a positive number, it's going to say that's positive. Okay, so the eagle-eyed amongst you might have spotted the flaw in this program. It's not a, a coding, it's not a syntactical error, so it's not an error in my coding, but it's a, a logical error. Are those the only two types of number? Well, no, because we might have a situation where uh, I enter 0, for example, and it tells me that's positive. And obviously 0 uh, isn't positive. 0 is a special case. So what we could do is we can either say, so we've ruled out the fact that it's negative, and then we could say um, else, and then we could have another if inside that, which says you could say if i is greater than 0, then... And then, obviously, we're missing, missing our end if now. Um, and then, there we need an alternative as well. So if it's greater than 0, say positive. The only other case, so we've ruled out it being less than 0 and it being greater than 0. The only thing left is that it is actually uh, 0 itself, so we can cope with that as well. So we'll say 
that's zero. So there we go, we run that program, run it three times. If we put a negative number, it says it's negative. It, if we run it again, I'll put a positive number in and it says it's positive. And if I run it again and I put zero in, it will say that's zero. So that's coped with three things, even though um, any condition, because what happens in programming languages, any comparison you have, that will always evaluate to either true or false. So all ifs are really just if true or if false, because i is less than zero will be true or false, depending on the value of i. So uh, you only ever have two alternatives. So if you want to have a kind of third situation, uh, you need to break it down. So having an if inside another if is called a nested if. There is another way to do it, which is you could say else if. There is an else if construct. So let's just uh, get rid of that. So else if, um, yeah, so i is greater than zero, then, and um, what we want to do, say then, is we'll just copy and paste this and just say positive. And then finally, we can have a third thing like that. We could say, um, in fact, let's copy and paste that again. So we could do it that way as well. So we can have an else if. So it, it saves us a little bit of length, but it's basically this, the same idea. So if I run this now, give me, uh, so I'll have a positive number and it says it's positive. Give me a negative number, it says it's negative. And give me a zero and it says it's zero. So if you've got a list of alternatives, rather than having lots of nested loops, you can have else if. So if it's less than zero, so this. Otherwise, that's a, so that's an additional check. If it's greater than zero, um, and then otherwise catches anything that's not covered by the ifs or the else ifs. So if it's not greater than zero, and it's not less than zero, then it must be zero. So that's the only thing left. So you need to be, be a little bit careful constructing these uh, sometimes, because uh, what, what you can, so you, in this particular case, you could have um, this. And in fact, you can uh, you can have these all on one line. So if you're only doing one thing, you can do that and save yourself a little bit of time. You can have them as separate um, things like this. So you could say it, but then you'd have to have the third condition. You could say if i equals zero. So that's a kind of third way to do it. So if you're only doing one thing, you can have it all on one line. You then then don't need the end if. So in this particular case, because they're all mutually exclusive, it's either got to be negative or it's positive or it's zero, and it can't be any combination of those. Uh, this should work. So give me a number. I say one. It says it's positive. Give me a number and minus one is negative. And zero is obviously zero. However, um, if it was possible to be more than one of those things at the same time, then you would say both. So it wouldn't stop after having done one. Um, so if you had greater than 10, greater than 100, for example. Um, so if you had this, so if it's greater than 10, then say bigger than 10. And if it's greater than 100, then say greater than 100. Let's do away with the third one. So now, if I run this program, if I say 12, it'll tell me it's bigger than 10, so that's right. But if I run it again, and I say 101, it's going to say it's bigger than 10 and bigger than 100. Now, you might want it to do that, because obviously it is, but um, if you don't want it to say both of those, then... Um, you might want to do something like this. So you could say if it's well, you could do you could construct it a little bit carefully. Um, so you could say something like this. I'm just going to move that up a line. So if you tested whether it's a hundred first, because obviously that's big enough, um, and then you could say else if and then you'd, you'd 
because we've got uh, an else, we need an end if. And that's confused it slightly. But there we go. Uh, so now, if we do it this way, because it will check whether it's greater than 100 first, and it will only check whether it's greater than 10 if it's not greater than 100. So now, that should um, only give one message. So if I say 10, it'll say um, it'll, it'll, it's not working. So if it's else if i is greater than 10, so if it's greater than 100, then it says it's greater than 100. Um, otherwise, if it's greater than 10, then say code is bigger than 10. So why is that not working? So then we'll have a, well, we'll just have a final one as well. So then we can also add, add a third thing if you wanted to, to say um, console.write is um, less than 10. So try that now. So if I put in a big number, it's saying it's greater than 100. If I say 21, it's saying it's bigger than 10. Did I type in the wrong number the first time? And then if I say uh, 5, it says less than 10. So that's working right. I must have typed in the wrong number the first time. So um, if I only want one thing to appear, I don't want separate ifs. I probably want to use an else in that case. So that's a quick look at if we can get the computer to make a decision, uh, sometimes known as selection on certain exam board uh, syllabuses, specifications. Uh, we can check for a single thing, and if we only want to do a single thing, we can do it on a single line. Otherwise, we indent the things that we want to do and have an end if at the end. Um, if we've got an alternative, we can say if and else. And if we've got more than two alternatives, we can have uh, additional conditions uh, by using else if. And then we finish the whole thing off with an end if.